Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. Now we know there's been private whispers, worries, secret meetings in Georgetown bars among the political pundit class for years about President Biden and whether he should run again in 2024, whether he's competent mentally, physically to run again. Well, those whispers are now going public with a little known backbencher, Congressman Dean Phillips of Minnesota, who a week or so ago, kind of stories started popping out that he might primary Joe Biden, that he was going to New York City to meet with donors. Well, he appeared on the Sunday show uh, yesterday uh, to call for more competition and provide a real mixed word salad to try and launch more primary challengers against Joe Biden while not losing his lifetime DNC Christmas party invitation. Let's take a look first at his really, really word jumble. And then of course him politely begging Cornell West to please, please run in the Democratic primary. Democrats are telling me that they want not a coronation, but they want a competition. The New York Times poll from this week shows 55% of Democratic voters want some alternatives to the current people in the primary. 83% of those under 30, Democrats under 30, want alternatives and about 76% I mean, of independents. So when I just want to make my decide? case. When are you going to decide? Well, I think, well, th let me get to my point. Okay. So if we don't heed. I've given you some room. <laughs> yes, you have. If we don't heed that call, shame on us. And the consequences, I believe, are going to be disastrous. So my call is to those who are well positioned, well prepared, of good character and competency, they know who they are, to jump in. Because Democrats and the country need competition. It makes everything better. That's my call to them right now. So if they don't, you will. I'm not saying I will. I, look, I think I'm well positioned to be president of the United States. You do. I do not believe I'm well positioned to run for it right now. People who are mm -hmm. should jump in because we need to meet the moment. The moment is now. That is what the country is asking. I for. gave you some running room, so let's tighten up the answers if we can. Can sure. President Biden beat Donald Trump? I think he can. But I think the only way to determine that objectively is to go through a process. By the way, before it's too late, and I want to tell you this about President Biden, an amazing man. Mm -hmm. I love the man. He is competent. He is honorable. His integrity, I believe, is unvarnished. He has led this country through extraordinarily difficult times. This is not about him. This is about listening to people. And I'm afraid in this bubble here in Washington, people get real tone deaf real fast, and we should be listening. That's what this is about. It's my call to action. <laughs> First of all, put everything aside. Anybody ever watch House of Cards here uh, before Kevin Spacey was disgraced? Doesn't this guy look like just your classic cardboard cutout of a House of Cards character? You know, that charming, semi-good looking character who is really just sinister and evil behind closed doors. It is really, really striking. Anyway, so couple things about what he's saying here. First of all, he's trying to kind of have his cake and eat it too. He wants to call for more competition, which is really the bat signal to Wall Street. They love competition and free markets. We need more competition, i.e. more rigging of the democratic process. Uh, that's what competition usually means uh, from politicians and Wall Street. But He's trying to have it both ways. He wants to call for more competition against President Biden, but then say, I adore President Biden. He's a great man, and he could definitely beat uh, Donald Trump. Well, then why the hell are you on TV calling for more competition? Shit or get off the pot. You can't have it both ways. If you think Biden could win, why are you calling for more competition? Clearly, he wants to have it where He's calling for more competition, i.e. more candidates, which will eventually be him jumping in, I think. Or, but he also doesn't want to lose, you know, his DNC Christmas party invitation. He doesn't want to perennially get pushed to the back bench. Uh, and he doesn't want to get on the bad side of the Biden, Obama, Clinton, neoliberal machine. Well, he's going to because he's now on a Sunday show calling for more competition, i.e. for somebody or some buddies to get in there uh, to put Biden out of his political misery. Uh, but what I also find interesting is he wants more alternatives. Well, I'm not an RFK fan, RFK fan, but you already have two other candidates. Why is he not calling for debates since there's RFK, Marianne Williamson in the race? Why is he not calling for CBS to have Marianne Williamson, RFK Jr. on? Why is the two current candidates uh, competing against Joe Biden not enough? 
in 2016, you only had Hillary Clinton, uh, Bernie Sanders, Martin O'Malley, Lincoln Chafee for five minutes. You didn't have a massive field of Democratic candidates to start. So why is the current two not at least a good point to start? I don't see any calls by uh, Mr. Phillips here to actually have the primary with the two uh, two challengers right now, have a debate, et cetera, et cetera. So he's basically calling for more corporate candidates. He's basically calling for more status quo, uh, blue dog, new Democrat candidates to get in there so that we could put Biden out of his political misery. So he clearly, clearly shouldn't be running again, but basically have a younger version of Biden, possibly him. But I really found interesting his comments on Cornell West. Let's take a look uh, when he was asked about whether Cornell West should be running a uh, third party, that is. Assess Cornell West. Do you have any anxiety about him running as a, a Green Party candidate? I do. Anybody who wants to turn the page and go to the future in this country should be worried about Cornell, Cornell West's candidacy. Uh, any third party entrance that would take votes from whoever is going to take on the likely nominee from the GOP, and that's probably Donald Trump. So I would ask Mr. West, I would ask others who are contemplating third party runs to please think about your legacy, think about the future, and consolidate around entering a Democratic primary, because that's why we have primary. I would kindly ask you, Mr. West, we, you know, we know you really uh, are trying to do the right thing here, but kindly step aside, get in line, enter the competition of the Democratic primary so we could kindly screw you uh, in the front and probably on the back, too, and rig the whole process against you. Kindly, kindly, for the sake of the future, kindly get in line. It's basically what he's saying. Uh, that's why Cornell West is not running in the Democratic primary, whatever you think of it. Maybe some of you want him to run in the Democratic primary. Obviously, a lot of you don't. But he's basically saying, for the sake of the future, please kindly get in line so we could do it like we always do it and rig the process against you. This isn't about competition. This is about neutralizing threats, which Cornell West is a threat, even though, as I've clearly shown, he's... By history's uh, standards and data, it's not very likely that he's going to pull bites from Biden. It's more likely, based on the data, that people who vote for Cornell West, if he is not an option, are just not going to vote. They're not Joe Biden voters. They're not Donald Trump voters. They are people that would choose not to vote. Based on Jill Stein voters in 2016, when they were surveyed, they said if she was not on the ballot, they wouldn't have voted. Uh, so... Seems that we're going to continue to get this propaganda about Cornell West is a spoiler. He's peeling votes away, but we're not going to actually get the data that shows, no, the likely Cornell West voter will not vote if Cornell West is not on the ballot. Uh, I also want to play you a clip uh, from my recent interview with Shama Sawant. Uh, she talks about the coordinated assault. Yes, the coordinated assault that is coming from the Democratic Party and its media allies uh, basically to attack Cornell West. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, it's only going to get uh, worse. I mean, they're going to be unrelenting about this. We, we better be clear. It is going to be nonstop and it is going to be vicious and ruthless. And that's why it's so crucial, as I was saying uh, when when I was on with Jill Stein uh, earlier, that uh, it's, it's crucial that the campaign really build a base among millions of working people because that is the only that you know that is the only um, weapon or tool we have on our side to push back against this establishment uh, offensive i mean that's what they're carrying out as you said you know they're carrying out a concerted offensive it's a systematic and concerted offensive and yes you're totally right it is not like this cnn commentator or this Democratic Party representative is doing those attacks. It is a very coordinated assault on Cornell West to, to you know, to and it's a it's a massive fear mongering campaign. And it is it will be a, a, a campaign to demonize Cornell West. Also, we should expect uh, personal attacks against him. I mean, I had that you know we had that happen here where they tried to attack me personally as well. The first time you know when we ran our first campaign in 2013, already when at that time when they saw. When the po you know opinion polls were showing that we are actually we actually have a fighting chance to win, at that time they launched a personal attack against me, talking about 
my personal life, which had nothing to do with the the political questions at hand. And that's how we responded. We responded by saying, this is the kind of fear mongering they do. Well, I concur. Get ready, because the personal attacks are going to come hot and heavy. They're already starting with, oh, he owes half a billion dollars in taxes. He might owe uh, money in taxes, but I'd like to actually get the answer from Cornell West, whose integrity I'm going to trust more so over the corporate media. And also, why do you owe this much in taxes? Do you owe less than they're stating, et cetera, et cetera? So we'll wait for an answer from Cornell West on that. But another uh, element here, and she's absolutely right, expect the attacks to come hot and heavy. Uh, another element that I found very interesting here is you have Dean Phillips, a milk toast corporatist, owned a gelato company, uh, Democratic congressman from Minnesota, going on the Sunday shows, calling for more primary challengers against Joe Biden. Why is this not a spoiler? Why is MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington Post, where is the meltdown over Dean Phillips, the spoiler? Where is the meltdown that this is going to spoil Biden's chances? Where is the narrative that Ted Kennedy's primary challenge against Jimmy Carter hurt Jimmy Carter uh, and made him vulnerable to Ronald Reagan, where he ultimately lost in 1980? Where is the narrative that having uh, all these primary challenges to a sitting president is going to hurt and weaken him? Uh, against uh, if it's Trump again. I don't see anything about Dean's, Dean Phillips or m if there are more Democrats that get involved, them playing spoiler to Biden. I, I happen to just type it into Twitter to see maybe I'm missing something. Are people calling Dean Phillips and these calls for, you know, more candidates against Joe Biden uh, a spoiler? Uh, shockingly, three things came up all from uh, previous years, uh, 2020 and uh, 2022. So nope, no narrative about Dean Phillips, the spoiler. No narrative about more candidates uh, would hurt Biden. Seems like a selective standard for the spoiler framing. Uh, listen, I do think it would be better to have more candidates against Joe Biden if they were actually progressive candidates. However, we do know the DNC is literally Biden's campaign. They will not hold a primary, even though they're supposed to be a neutral body. We do know that they've openly said, yeah, we could bring the primary like the old days, smoking cigars in the back room. So more candidates. Yeah, it would be entertaining. It would give us something to cover. But would it actually be a fair process? Of course not. Uh, but it is very illuminating that Dean Phillips and the corporate ilk, if he jumps in or other corporatists jump in, kindly, respectfully, Cornell West, please, for the sake of competition, please, please come over to the Democratic side. Uh, I do think Cornell West is smart enough not to do that. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, it is not a small thing that a sitting congressman, a Democrat, is calling for more people to jump in, uh, that might be kind of the first soldier to get on the battlefield and kind of sacrifice himself before more people do. Remember, Gavin Newsom, California governor, has been mighty active recently uh, in policy, uh, you know, announcing California would make its own insulin, now challenging uh, Ron DeSantis to a debate, which I don't really think Gavin Newsom would be challenging uh, Ron DeSantis to a debate possibly upstaging Joe Biden if there wasn't some people in the White House kind of giving a wink, wink, do it. Okay. Things are getting very interesting. Very interesting indeed.